Hey everybody, I'm Angela Walters. Welcome to this week's live chat. Have you missed me? It's been a couple weeks since I've been here. Sorry for the absence. Two weeks ago, we got hit with a freak kind of snowstorm. And since I film here at the studio and not at home, I decided it'd be best if I just stayed home and got cuddled up in my quilts. And then last week, I was on spring break with my family. We went to the five uh, national parks in Utah and had a blast. But I am glad to be back. Glad to be hosting another live chat and talking about quilting. If you are catching this live right now, be sure to type your questions out because Jessica is here as always to write them down so I can answer them live during the chat. And if you can't catch it live, if you're watching it later, no worries. Just leave your questions in the comments. I get on there from time to time and answer them. So I'm excited to share a couple of upcoming events with you and then also to give you some design ideas and inspiration for quilting large areas of negative space. So dealing with those areas of your quilts that can be a little bit overwhelming when it comes to picking out the designs. All right, well first I wanna show you some um, upcoming things I'm very, very excited about. Now, I know not all of you live close to me. I'm outside of Kansas City, Missouri in Liberty, Missouri, just 45 minutes from Missouri Star Quilt Company. Just gonna throw that out there. And in May, I'm gonna be hosting a Handy Quilter long arm truck event. We will have 12 beautiful long arm machines and I'll be doing hands-on long arm classes. I'm so excited. It's been a while since I've been able to teach, dang COVID. And to get to teach hands-on on a long arm is definitely a unique and fun opportunity. So. If you live in the area or you can make your way to this area, I hope that you'll join me for these classes. Um, the listings are on a link in the description box below if you want to check out the details and all that. But I was going to give you a quick rundown of what I'm teaching. Um, one of the fun things about, sorry, wrong one. One of the fun things about teaching hands-on classes is I get to pick what I want to talk about. And so, of course, the first class is going to be feathers. We know that feathers are my favorite. I love quilting them, just had a whole video series about them. So I'll be doing a whole day hands-on class on feathers. And then also rulers, specifically about quilting on rulers, quilting with rulers on a long arm. So um, that's gonna be the class, second class. Then third class, I'm gonna share some of my favorite freehand fillers. And we're gonna talk about designs that work great in smaller areas and larger areas. And by the time we're done, my students will have a nice little toolbox of designs to use on their quilts. But that's not it, I'm not the only teacher. I'm bringing in Pro Stitcher expert, Susan Manry. And the Pro Stitcher is the computerized program for the Handy Quilter machines. And she's gonna be teaching a couple classes. Um, one will be the Pro Stitcher designer class, as well as a Pro Stitcher basics class. So a lot of fun lessons to learn, a lot of cool events. Plus, if you check that link in the description box, um, you'll see I'm having kind of a meet and greet drinks and demo one evening as well. So again, I'm sorry if you can't make it in the air, make it to this area, but if you can, I hope that you'll stop by and join us for a week of long arm learning. All right, also, if you can't make it here in May, maybe you can make it here in June. In June, we're hosting our annual quilt walk. And that's where we kind of take over downtown Liberty, Missouri. We um, have like a quilting exhibits, a show and tell kind of thing. And then you can uh, collect the pieces to an exclusive quilt pattern that I design just for the event. and. Just gonna make a little sneak peek announcement, a little hint here, or a little, I uh, haven't announced it publicly yet, but Tula Pink is going to be here doing a book signing and an exhibit and a meet and greet. So if coming to see me is not enough, then you should probably come to see Tula. So very excited about that. Again, that's June 18th. Um, so sorry if you can't make it, but if you can, I hope, I hope that you will. All right, let's talk about quilting. Enough about upcoming events. Um, if you remember, two weeks ago, I talked about quilting large areas of negative space featuring the Westward quilt. And that was the latest episode of the Midnight Quilter. And I kind of talked about different things that you can do for these large areas. Now, I know not every quilt that you make is going to have a large unquilted area, but every once in a while, we make these quilt tops that are nice and quick to put together, but result in a lot of negative space or background space. Now, during that live chat, just to kind of summarize, some of the things I talked about was how you can use echoing around your quilt blocks or in your area to either build up smaller areas or make bigger areas smaller and easier to manage. Um, I love to joke that echoing is your best quilting friend. So uh, definitely a great option for those areas. And then you can echo as much or as little as you like. And this really applies to any kind of quilt or any area on your quilt. I also talked about how using some fillers 
picking a background or picking like one filler design to use around all the other elements kind of kind of takes some of that decision away. And when you're picking your filler that you're going to use, go ahead and make it something that you're comfortable with quilting since you'll be doing a lot of it. So swirls are always my go-to. I love quilting swirls. So of course that's going to be my filler. And then once you're done, you can create some secondary effects. You can add a lot of quilting or not, just depending on your preferences. So this example was very geometric, um, very modern, and I'm gonna show some other quilts that I've quilted throughout my um, quilting career with large areas of negative space and give you some kind of inspiration for picking designs. So let's look through some of these. Now, this particular quilt is kind of fun. It was the first time I pieced a quilt with solid fabric. Right, so grandpa, who taught me how to quilt, always used solid fabric, so I assumed that was old school, so I used prints. But then when the modern movement kind of started, um, I got enthralled with shot cottons. And so this is a quilt I made um, just to look like paint kind of pouring and, and going everywhere. But in that background area, that gray, there was just so much of it. And I decided that adding a nice texture would be a great way to go about it. But I don't want to quilt tiny pebbles over a whole quilt. So one tip I'd give you is try changing up the scale of your quilting to create um, not only an interesting effect, but to make the quilting a little bit easier. So along the top of the quilt, I quilted pebbles nice and small. But as I work down the quilt, my pebbles got larger and larger until you can see towards the middle, they're nice and round. So the idea being, you can give it this subtle change in scale to make it look interesting and also kind of to pull attention to an area. Um, plus, let's be honest, it's just a lot easier to quilt bigger pebbles than smaller ones. You can really take this idea as you know far or as complicated as you want or keep it nice and simple. I just took my quilt and I marked out some general reference lines to kind of break it up. And in one section, I quilted the smallest size. In the next section, I quilted the next and, and so on and so forth. Then once I erase those lines, I have this beautiful gradual uh, change in scale. Now, I will say that when I do this or when I talk about this in public or like a live uh, trunk show, usually the question comes, you know, if I have a lot of difference in density, is that going to make my quilt wavy? Well, when I change the scale of my design, I'm not changing it by a drastic amount. And I'm also not hanging these up in a quilt show. So as far as laying on your, on your bed and looking beautiful, I wouldn't even worry about it. But I should say, don't do what I suggest and expect to win any ribbons at a quilt show. Anyway, uh, changing up the scale of the design, real easy way to use the same design over a whole area, but still give it a little intricate look. All right, go big, right? If you have a big area, put some big designs to fill it in. Uh, this particular quilt was one of the early ones I quilted for Tula, and it, this border was just huge. I mean, it had to be like this big. Um, so I decided to do some beautiful scrolls just to really kind of fill in that area. So I know that if you're working on a small-throated sewing machine, it can be a little intimidated to quilt those larger designs. So this is something that might not apply to everyone, but using those bigger designs are going to help fill in that area and also kind of make it look to scale. If I have a huge border, quilting a little motif might make it look a little odd. Um, again, this is all personal preference. You have to kind of decide what you think about it. But I love how using big designs can really make an impact on your quilt. Now, I particular in this particular quilt, I use two layers of batting because that's what Tula loves. And so adding those dense pebbles around that scroll work just makes it pop. Although it doesn't have to be that dense or that complicated on your quilts for sure. This particular quilt is actually a panel that she had printed for one of her quilt market booths. And it's funny because this has been so long ago that I've quilted it, but it's still one of my favorites. And again, going big with the designs. So the Parisville is the name of the collection, so easy to put that in there, but also the big plumes, those nice big feathers. Now this particular um, technique will be easier if you have a small throated machine because your petals are still going to fit within the throat of your machine. They're just not going to be super long. So again, taking your time, deciding where you want to add that wow factor, going big with the design is not only going to make it look great, but it takes up more room so you can get done quicker, which I mean, come on, it's always a win-win. Another thing you can do with those large areas is combine designs. Now, I love combining designs because I get, you know, super bored 
I'm super easily amused, but I'm also easily bored. So changing up the designs makes it a little bit easier. And this kind of falls in the idea of changing the scale of the design, except instead of changing the size, I'm changing the design itself. So this particular quilt is a whole cloth. It was for a uh, quilt market booth that I had. We kind of wrapped it around a mannequin to look like a dress. So again, just kind of picking designs and having them kind of meld into each other, starting with you know, big swirls and then adding my leaves and, and other feathers and then having those beautiful leaves down the center of it. So again, if you want it to be a little bit more regulated or you wanna be sure that your designs are going where you want them, using a marking tool to just general mark out sections will make it a little bit easier, especially if you're working on a long arm and you can't see the whole area um, or you just wanna be able, to, you, be able to have a path that you can follow. And I think I have a closer up picture here. Um, again, I used that contrasting thread to really draw attention to the center of the quilt because that's where I wanted the attention to go. But you can achieve still that really cool texture and technique with a thread color that blends in. So you don't have to have contrasting thread and you don't have to put pebbles inside of your leaves. I just, I just did because I'm a glutton for punishment. So using several different designs on a quilt is going to be a, a real easy way to fill in that area and to keep it interesting, keep you from getting bored. All right. Also, using the quilting design to break up the negative space. So we already kind of saw this with the echoing um, when we talked about the westward quilt. But sometimes when you're looking at a quilt and you have all this area to fill in, it can just be intimidating. Where do you start? How do you work your way through it? Well, you've sh I'm sure you've heard the saying, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time, right? So using your quilting to break that background up into smaller sections and then filling it in just makes it a little bit more manageable. Let you kind of just take little bites of it as you go. So in this particular quilt, this is kind of just a picture of the top. This is one that Tula um, pieced and had me quilted. A lot of beautiful negative space. And it's not often that she gives me a lot of negative space. That's a solid fabric. So having fun with different fillers, different designs, allows me to create some fun different textures. Now, I will pause real quick. If you're gonna try this using a bunch of different designs on your quilt, using the same or a thread color that matches your quilt top will help prevent the quilting from overwhelming the piecing. In the last quilt I showed with the blue whole cloth, it's okay to use gold shiny thread because there's no piecing that I'm competing with. But on Tula's quilt, I know as much as she loves me, she loves her quilt too. So I didn't want the quilting to overwhelm it or you know take away from her beautiful piecing. So using that matching thread color just helps kind of Give me the beautiful look of texture without creating quilting that's gonna be distracting to her beautiful piecing. And if we look a little bit closer, kind of zoom in, uh, using the piecing as inspiration is always one of my favorite things. And we saw this on the Westward quilt as well, but quilting the blocks around the, the center of the quilt just kind of allowed me to give, uh, kind of highlight that pattern and highlight the piecing, but also just give it some interest. So quilting some extra little, uh, you know, hexagons and then quilting the hexagons, the quilted hexagons the same way I quilted the pieced hexagons just helps give it some continuity. And anytime you wanna draw attention to a part of your quilt, using your designs that point to it are really gonna help say, hey, in case you're wondering, this is where you should look. So those horizontal wavy lines that run into those blocks, um, give it that look of depth, but also helps draw attention to the center of the quilt. Although I don't think it needs any help getting attention, she did a great job piecing it with her color placement, but I like to overthink the quilting sometimes, so there is that. And you can see a little bit closer again, combining different textures, different designs. It doesn't have to be similar. So that first picture I showed you was a lot of wavy lines, a lot of curvy designs, but in the center, in the different color fabric, I went with a more geometric kind of all over design and the effect is still the same. A beautiful texture, a nice design, but again, filling that area in. Now, this particular uh, straight line design is in my machine quilting with rulers free motion challenge. And just a quick aside here, even though it might look complex, it's still that same idea that I'm quilting a chunk, filling it in and moving on. So I'm able to handle little pieces and then step back when I'm done and see the whole overall effect. And those kind of designs are always my favorite. And one last picture, you know, these are like my kids. It's like, oh, that's a cute picture of my kid, and that's a cute picture of my kid. I like to show all the different pieces. So lots of fun, different designs, but again, not taking away from the center of the quilt. And there's more of that kind of geometric. 
Uh, it's really fun how that goes together, so check out that video and that challenge. You, you'll be surprised that it's very, very easy and you can get that kind of cool, different look. All right, speaking of going big, here we have this quilt, and this is one that was pieced by Emily Sierra of Carolina Patchworks, and this, this quilt has been, it's been probably 10 years since I've quilted this quilt, and it's not huge, it's only about this big, but I loved how she had the narrow and then the wide. So kind of using the same design on both and just different applications kind of, I don't know, fits the pattern and makes it look fun. So kind of using designs in a repetitive way to give it a little continuity and then using echoing to fill in the rest. So a big, beautiful scroll down the side and then lots and lots of echo lines to fill in that irregular space. So when in doubt, echo. Did I tell you echoing is your best quilting friend? Yeah, it really is. So you can see here a little bit closer up. This is gonna work no matter what design you put there. I could have done a big feather. I could have done a swirl chain. I could have quilted Angela is awesome along that section. Um, then again, using the echoing lines, echo lines to fill in any irregular spaces. Because ultimately, we wanna make sure the whole area is filled in because I think people will notice a gap in the quilting before they notice an error. So as long as we fill it in, it's gonna be fine. But what happens when you make a quilt that has a lot of negative space or background area, but it's just irregularly shaped? These are the tricky ones. A big rectangle, no problem. This particular quilt, though, really did stump me for a while. And I don't have a picture of the whole quilt. I don't know why I didn't take one. But it's a quilt that I did for Tula Pink. And it had these big arcs and these points. Well, there was just enough in that pink and that orange that I wanted to do something interesting but man, that area is just really irregular. So when I'm dealing with areas like that, I'm gonna pick a design that's pretty forgiving that can fill in different widths. So in the blue, you can see there the swirl chain. That is one of my favorites because it can still give it a focal look. It can still follow the curve of her piecing, but it's not quite as difficult to fit into an irregular shape like a feather might be. So as at any, at any point when I run into the points of the piecing, I can just echo or you know travel and, and move on. And it doesn't affect the look of the swirl chain. As opposed to a feather, if a petal is kind of off or a few petals don't look quite right, it's going to be a little bit more noticeable. So picking designs that are forgiving and then can also fit those irregular areas. Another thing you can do, especially if you have irregular areas with points like this, you know, it's, it's just very jagged, um, using echoing to kind of fill it in and even it out will make it a little bit easier. So here we can see the swirl chain in the orange and then the echo lines around the points. This is actually a dot to dot technique. So I started first by echoing the points. You can see the regular one. And I came back on the second echo. It touches the points of the first one, but in between there's a little bit of a gap. So what it's doing is taking that triangle and making it a little shallower and easier to fill in. Um, anything with a lot of jagged points, especially if it's paper pieced, usually those are where I see those, um, using the echoing technique to kind of smooth it out and make that area not quite as irregular. And then using a filler to fill in the rest of the area. So just like we saw with the echo lines, you know, you want to make sure you fill in everything as much as possible. So using those pebbles allows me to fill in any areas that the swirl chain didn't reach. Uh, the result is, you know, I still have that motif. It still follows the piecing. I think it looks great, uh, but it also fits that irregular area. And once you figure out how to do it, or once you figure out how to quilt an area, use it again and again. It doesn't have to be something different in each one. So in each of those rings, I did the same thing, quilting the swirl chain, using the echoing, and then putting in those pebbles. Of course, any filler would have been fine. I could have done swirls or something a little bit quicker and easier, but it was Tula, so I wanted to quilt the heck out of it. And this is a little bit closer up picture of the dot to dot echoing. So we saw echoing, we hear it a lot, but it really is gonna help make these kind of quilts easier for you to manage. All right, this is the last one, and then I will take your questions. But when you're dealing with irregular areas, we've already seen how you can combine a lot of different designs and you can break up the area, but think of it as an opportunity to stretch your quilting wings. When you're quilting a design or an area on your quilt, you don't have to do new stuff over the whole quilt because that's a little stressful, but throw in a few new to you designs to practice, right? And if you don't love how it looks, no worries, just switch to something different. This particular quilt is pretty small. It's just a little wall hanging, but I did a lot of different things on there because I wanted to. Adding some little starbursts, 
Um, but then adding some wavy lines, just, just having a good time with it. So I know that sometimes getting started can be stressful, right? Because you're like, oh, I want it to be perfect. I spent all this time on this quilt. I don't want it to, I don't want to mess it up. But when you get to working on your quilt, just know that when you're finished, you'll have a finished quilt. And that's ultimately the goal. So as you're quilting and trying new designs and new techniques, if you don't love it, switch to something else. Throw in, you know, random designs that feel like fun to quilt, and the result will be a fun, whimsical quilt that's going to, quilting, fun, whimsical quilting that's going to look great on your quilts. All right, and this is the full shot of the quilt. Again, a lot of different stuff going on. Uh, I, you know, I think it's fun, and, and because I'm using that blending thread color, it's going to keep it from being overwhelming. This is the more up close of it. I liked this picture, it's very artistic, very, you know, uh, how the angle was. And I did say that was the last one, I do have one more. Using different designs and just having fun with it. So we already kind of saw that on this last quilt, but try some different things. You, you'll never uh, quite know what you're gonna come up with until you get started. Now, I'm not against having a plan before you start. Sometimes knowing what we're gonna do is gonna make us feel more comfortable. But as you start quilting, even if you have a plan, if it's not working, switch it up, do something different, kind of challenge yourself to see how you can do the same design in different ways or create different textures. I guess if I'm gonna say it a lot simply, simpler, um, just have fun with it. Don't overstress, don't overthink it, just get to quilting and have a blast. Easy for me to say, right? Because you know I love machine quilting, so it, it's, it's all great. So when you're dealing with those areas of negative space, I hope that you feel encouraged and um, inspired to just fill in those areas. Ultimately, when you're filling in negative space or background areas, you're just trying to enhance the quilt blocks. So having fun in that, those areas are a fun way to go. Now, I didn't really show any design ideas on how to quilt smaller background areas. If I happen to come across a quilt like that, a background area, if it's tiny, it's just gonna get a filler, like a swirl or a pebble or something like that. There's not enough room to add a lot of details, so keeping it simple is always the best options. Now, I see Jessica over there writing down questions, so I'm gonna get your questions answered live. Um, while she brings those over, I will tell you, I'll be back next week, and next week's live chat, I'm gonna be talking about continuous curve quilting. If you don't know what continuous curve quilting is, I'm about to change your life. Um, it's one of those really versatile design techniques where you use the points of your block to create the designs. So I'm gonna give you tips on how to do it. I'm gonna show you how to create motifs. I'm gonna show you how to hide anything that doesn't look great and give you some design ideas. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Okay, question, did I use the same batting or two different ones for Tula's quilts? So it's always interesting when I mention I used two layers of batting uh, on her quilts. That really came about because she wanted the quilting to really pop and want that quilt to hang nice and flat. So in her booths at Quilt Market, so that's really heavy, but it looks really great, doesn't it? Um, there's different ways you can go about that. You can use two different kinds of batting. I know a lot of quilters that do, they like to put like maybe cotton on the bottom and a puffy wool on top. But here's the deal. When I started quilting for customers, I only had room in my quilting room for one kind of batting, Quilter's Dream Poly. So all of her quilts have two layers of the very same batting. Not for any like, you know, artistic reason, just because that's all I had. So if you wanna try the technique, tr you can try different uh, battings, you can try the same. Um, you'll find what you like and, and how you like how it looks. Hope that helps. What's my favorite batting? I guess I did just answer that, didn't I? Quilter's Dream Poly Select. Uh, Quilter's Dream is the brand, polyester is the fiber, and Select is the loft. So when I say polyester though, it doesn't sound right, but it's not like your gross polyester. It's a beautiful uh, poly batting that has a nice drape. Ultimately though, as long as you use a high quality batting, that's the most important thing. I have some quilts laying around my house that I quilted in my early quilting career. Uh, when I first got my long arm and I used that cheap, cheap batting and it's bearding through the quilt. So I, I keep pulling it out. Eventually I'm not gonna have any more batting in there. So just go with quality and you'll be, you'll be good to go. Oh, this is adorable. Jessica, did you write this or did somebody actually ask this? Have I won awards on other people's quilts that you quilted? I don't wanna brag, but um, a quilt I quilted did get the second place at a guild, guild quilt show in Nebraska. I have the ribbon. Um, it's kind of funny because I'm not a show quilter. Show quilting is a totally different thing. Um, so I don't enter shows and I don't know that any of my customers really did enter them either. Um, but when I'm talking about quilting, I like to talk about quilting so we can enjoy our quilts and use them. Um, I love looking at show quilts. I love going to shows and be like, oh my gosh, that is amazing. It just doesn't fit my personality. I can't spend 800 hours on a quilt. I would go insane. So 
Um, I, I have one, at least one award. On the true color quilt, what thread did I use? So that particular quilt, the uh, Tula Pink's uh, curved one, I love glide thread. Um, it's a 40 weight, I know if you've heard, watched any of my live chats, you know this already, but it's a 40 weight poly thread with a little bit of a sheen and it just looks beautiful. And then what's nice about picking the color is you can usually find a neutral that will work over a range of colors. So for that quilt, I don't remember exactly, but if I had to guess there was a light blue and maybe a light yellow and a light pink in there and it just, it looks great, it blends in, but just gives a little little hint of something. It's like, it's like putting sparkle on your eyeshadow, just a little, little pop of something. And do I have any info on the next challenge? I love that you all are excited and I am too. Uh, from time to time, about three to four times a year, I host a free motion challenge quilting along. It's a video series where we work together through a technique or through a, a quilt and it's kind of like having an encouragement partner with you along the way. We just finished up Fabulous Feathers. Well, not just, I guess it's been a few months. Um, and all the previous challenges are available to watch on my YouTube channel, but this next challenge will be coming up soon. So part of the process of putting it together is designing the optional panel, uh, coming up with the class idea. I've got the concept, it's gonna be fillers. So we're gonna learn a bunch of different filler designs and it's gonna be organized from smaller areas to larger areas. I think it's gonna be really cool the way I have it in my head. I just hope it looks like that in reality. And um, I just set, sent off all the fabrics for test prints. So getting close, getting close. I cannot wait to share the details with you. So cannot wait, it's gonna be fun. Um, Stay tuned for more information about that. You can find out all the previous ones, again, on my YouTube channel, or you can go to FMQ, like free motion quilting, challenge.com. So FMQchallenge.com. All right, y'all, I cannot wait to come back next week, and I will talk your ear off about continuous curve quilting designs and tips. And if you like this video or any of the free content I put out there, I hope you'll give the video a thumbs up or subscribe to my YouTube channel. That just helps YouTube know that it's pretty cool stuff and helps other quilters find it as well. All right, well, have a great, great weekend and a week, and I will see you next week for the next live chat. Until then, everybody, happy, happy quilting.